Hey, welcome back to the series of accountancy chapter 3 admission of a partner in this video we are learning about a problem so the first problem in this chapter the 12 marks problem and we'll start it with a further due so this is what the problem look like for the 12 marks and first I read out the problem a and B are the partner sharing profit and in the ratio of 2 is to 1 they're sharing profit on the basis of 3 is to 1 so this is very important and their balance sheet as on 31st 3 2018 was as follow this is their balance sheet before admission in a new partner so what's there in this balance sheet they have credit of 20,000 bills payable 10,000 reserve fund 12,000 capital of A and B which they introduced 60 and 40,000 and next in the asset side they have cash in hand 5,000 next they have stock 15,000 next they have debit of 20,000 and missionary 30,000 building 60 investment 12,000 so overall they have 142,000 balance in their balance sheet so what next on 1 4 2018 C is admitted into partnership on the following condition so the condition is this C should bring in cash of 25,000 rupees cash as a capital and 15,000 as a goodwill so they are sharing one by fifth share in the future profit whatever the profit they will get they will share by one by 15 one by fifth so next appreciation building 20 percent so the building is appreciating at 20 percent from their actual value and stock is revalued at 12,000 rupees if stock is uh, here in this case it's 15,000 and that is revalued at the end of the year 12,000 rupees so next in the adjustment they said about provision for doubtful debts that is maintained at 5% on the debit hours 20,000 there is a 5% provision for doubtful debts and last adjustment is outstanding salary rupees 2000 rupees they has to pay 2000 rupees outstanding salary that means due of salary so finally we need to prepare revaluation account partners capital account balance sheet of the firm so this is what we have to create so okay this is the question and they're asking us to prepare revaluation account partners capital account and the balance sheet because when a new partner is admitting to that particular business there will be some revalued for that year some asset may decrease some asset may increase that depends for that we have to go through revaluation account and next in order to share the profit among the partners or loss among the partners we need to create capital account of each partners and the last we need to create the balance sheet okay we'll erase this for now and we'll start solving this problem okay the first thing is we need to prepare revaluation account so in order to prepare revaluation account we have to put a column debtors creditors particular and amount that's it after that we'll be posting whatever the item that is belong to the credit side we'll be posting in credit and we'll be posting in debit side if it that belongs to debit you may ask me that how you'll choose this item is belong to the debit side and this item do belong to the credit side for that you need to watch the last video okay in the last video i go through the revaluation account journal entries so if that is asset that asset is decreasing what entry you should pass if the asset is increasing what journal entry you have to pass so like that i went through all over that in the last video if you not watch that video make sure that you have to watch it first and then come here so that will make you a big change because when you understand the basic concept you will get everything in this problem so i'll start with the revaluation account just write the particular amount and everything the normal stuff okay you may ask where to start the revaluation account the revaluation account itself says it's revaluating the asset which is already evaluated in the last year balance sheet right if asset is not recorded then you should record in revaluation account if the asset is revalued at that year due to depreciation then if you finding the difference between the asset value increase or decrease whatever you should write or a liability which is increase or decrease you should write in revaluation account that's a main simple concept be, uh, for uh, revaluation account so we'll start uh, from adjustment because we don't have any changes here in the adjustment only they have to give whatever the changes which is done in this year so starting with adjustment 
so the first adjustment is not belong to the revaluation account because that's uh, bringing capital we don't need to consider that in this we'll be considering in partners capital account because that's a capital right we'll be considering it as a capital next we'll go through the second adjustment that is appreciation of building at 20 percent building is appreciating at 20 percent if building value is increasing is that good for a company or bad for company it's good for the company so where you will be recording you will be recording in revaluation account in the credit side whichever the asset which is increasing or which is good for the company if that asset is increased then you will be recording in the credit side because the entry is like that the asset account data to if asset is increasing you will be writing this general entries that is asset account data to in this case building account data to revaluation account so the revaluation account should be created here that's why we'll be writing in the credit side by building so what is the building value the actual building value is 60000 rupees in that 20% is increasing so write 60000 into 20 by 100 this multiplication so if you write this or if you multiply this 60000 into 20 divided by 100 or you can write this double zero and double zero cancel and 600 into 20 or that's how it works actually 600 into 20 that you, you will get uh, 12,000 rupees come back to the question next we have uh, actually we cleared this one so we'll take it and next we have provision for doubtful debts provision for doubtful debts is 5% on what this data this data is nothing but it's like a loan given to someone if that is a bank or if it's a credit sale it's based on the credit sale in this credit sale they need to get 20,000 in that 5% will not be coming to the business because those people are defaulting the payment so the 5% is doubtful debts they will consider as doubtful that means doubtful means you will think it won't come for your business or you will think you won't get it imagine if you bought a loan from a bank and they will ask you to pay 20 months and certain installment you will pay 15 months and rest five months you won't pay the remaining amount the remaining amount will be the doubtful debts for the bank so it like it is similar to that so here 20,000 in 20,000 5 percent is doubtful debts so the 5 percent is doubtful debts means it's income or expenses for the company so actually that's an expense for the company because they need to get 20,000 in that 5 percent is not getting so loss so you'll be writing in the debit side two provision for doubtful debts actually i forgot to write the stock i'll write after this one so write two provision for doubtful debts okay and the doubtful debts is 20,000 rupees so 20,000 into 5 percent 5 percent is the doubtful debts if you multiply 20,000 into 5 divided by 100 you'll get 1000 rupees okay the 1000 rupees is a debt or doubtful debt okay next we forgot this uh, 12,000 rupees so that is stock is revalued at 12,000 stock was 15,000 and now it is 12,000 3,000 decreased right 3k decreased from the last year so that is bad sign for the company or that is expenses for the company so where you will be writing you will be writing in debit side because revaluation account debit to stock account the general entry is revaluation account debit to stock account we will write two stock the last year amount is 15,000 here I wrote uh, one zero extra so we'll cancel it 15,000 minus 12,000 you'll be writing 3,000 rupees so that's it okay and next we clear this one and next we have outstanding salary outstanding salary is 2000 rupees 2000 salary they need to give they're not given still so that's outstanding you'll write that outstanding salary 2000 rupees simple as that nothing because it's an expense for the company whatever the expense for the company you'll write here whatever the asset if the asset is decreasing you'll write here or in this in the credit side if the asset is increasing you'll write here or whatever the income for the company you'll write here so simple next we don't have anything we cleared this also so we don't have any adjustment for this here so what you will do the next step is to calculate the profit or loss in revaluation so here in this case find out the whichever side is higher so here you only entered these three items so consider only these three items 3000 1000 2000 if you calculate you'll get 6000 and if you calculate in the credit side you'll get 12000 so write the 12000 higher amount and that should be copied here as well so then 
subtract this from here this three amount so you enter from stock provision for doubtful deals and outstanding salary so subtract this from 12,000 you'll get 6,000 rupees so this 6,000 should be transferred to the each partners the old partners okay still new partners is not admitted in the business before admitting they have to revaluate the assets and liabilities so for that we are solving the revaluation account and to profit transfer to the a because whenever you get shortage in the debit side that's a profit whenever you get shortage in the credit side that's a loss so now we are transferring profit how to transfer profit 6000 the remaining amount that should be transferred to the two partners so 6000 into into what into this so when you are analyzing question went through this ratio 2 is to 1 from 2 is to 1 they have to calculate so 6000 into 2 divided by 3 this 3 is belong to what when you calculate the 2 is to 1 ratio this can be written as 2 by 3 and 1 by 3 this 2 by 3 is belong to the a and 1 by 3 is belong to the b the same as well here this will also apply to here this 6000 into 2 divided by 3 that is belong to the a if you multiply you will get 4000 and again the same 6000 into 1 by 3 so 1 by 3 if you multiply the 6000 into 1 divided by 3 you will get 2000 so that's it you just completed the revaluation account next we'll be going to the partners capital account so in order to find the partners capital account you just need to go through a format so the format is like this particular and a b c and again same applies here debit side credit side so starting with as usual in the credit side this is debit side so starting with as usual in the credit side from the credit side we need to enter the capital of the partners so in this case the capital of partner is 60,000 and 40,000 so write by balance from that balance they are bringing the capital no so that's why we are using the balance term by balance brought down 60,000 and 40,000 a and b we put all the three partners a b c column and a b c column so after this you need to enter the revaluation account amount here in the revaluation account we got a profit of 4000 2000 for a and b respectively so we will enter that by revaluation account they are getting 4000 and 2000 after this we need to get back to the question and we need to enter the reserve fund this also should be transferred to the partner's capital account this is also belong to the partner's capital account so this 12000 will be splitted in the form of 2 is to 1 so write reserve 12000 2 is to 1 in the old ratio that will be like 12k 12k is 12000 into 2 divided by 3 is equal to 8000 and next is 12000 into 1 by 3 that will be 4000 rupees so this is how you need to calculate and this 8000 will be written in the credit side of partners capital account and for the a and next for the b we'll write 4000 so after that if you get back to the question we don't have anything to enter we just need to enter the reserve fund and capital that's it in the last year balance sheet if you come back to the adjustment we have a one entry left we didn't even touch this entry so you need to enter this in partners capital account because c is getting 25000 and 15000 okay so get back to the partners capital account right by cash c is bringing capital so right by capital account 25000 rupees as capital so right by cash account 25000 next c is bringing goodwill of 15000 so the 15000 should be transferred to a and b the reason is when you are joining to the new business the main reason because a and b are getting goodwill due to the this reason imagine if you get a hundred rupees profit okay imagine this is hundred rupees profit in that if there is only two partner a and b how much they have to keep 50 50 rupees if another one partner is adding to the business means he will take some part of from a and some part from b as a profit so this is known as sacrifice part right so for that sacrifice c will bring some amount to compensate for this sacrification that is 15000 so that must be transferred to the a and b so right by goodwill we have 15000 as goodwill split this to a and b in the old ratio in order to split that you need to calculate 15000 into 2 by 3 and 15000 into 1 by 3 
15,000 into 2 by 3 will become 10,000 and 1 by 3 15,000 into 1 by 3 will become 5,000 that's it now we don't have anything to transfer we just total it and balance it now to get that you need to total it 60,000 4,000 8,000 10,000 that will become 82,000 and 40,000 2,000 4,000 5,000 that will become 51,000 and here we have only one amount that is 25,000 so 25,000 that will be written in the debit side to balance carry down to the next year this next year balance will be appear in the next year profit and loss account just like this by balance brought down this is brought down from where it is brought down just like the last year they sent a carry down amount that is this next year they will start by balance just like this so that amount will be 82,000, 51,000, 25,000. So this is how you have to solve a problem for a partner's capital account. And next we have solve a balance sheet. So just write the format, liability, amount, assets, amount. Next we'll get back to the question. So we'll be copying the same thing which is in the last year balance sheet. So from starting cash in hand 5,000, we'll just copy the same format and we'll change the amount. If that is changed, we'll be changing the amount. If that is, if there is no change in amount, we'll be writing same amount. We'll be writing the cash in hand in the balance sheet, and the cash in and 5,000 won't be the same because the last year cash in hand will be the same 5,000 plus this year C is bringing 25,000 capital, so that is also considered as a cash, and the 15,000 that is also considered as cash, the goodwill. Now goodwill is not be withdrawn by the old partner unless they said so we'll be considering as a capital itself or cash that's why we'll be writing 5000, 25000, 15000 as a cash in hand that's the cash they have right now so if you add this 45000 and next stock stock 15000 but this year this stock is revalued for 12000 rupees we need to write the 12000 stock 15,000 and less depreciation that's not a depreciation or revalued whatever you can write so minus 3,000 that will get 12,000 rupees next debit house debit house 20,000 is there and we subtracted 5% as doubtful debt so we need to subtract it debit house 20,000 minus provision for doubtful debts that is 1000 rupees we just calculated in revaluation account here we can see that we just calculated that in this account so 20,000 into 5 divided by 100 in the revaluation account we did that so that's 1000 should be subtracted and remaining 19,000 should be written in outer column next we have a missionary missionary we didn't have any adjustment for the missionary so we'll be writing same missionary so missionary 30,000 outer column next building so building is appreciated or increased so we'll be adding the increased value for 60,000 so building add appreciation we know how much appreciated building is 20 percent so 20 percent is already calculated in revaluation account that will be 12,000 so add this 12,000 because here in all it's all depreciated but here you need to give more attention because it's an income so that's why we are adding 60 and 12,000 you'll get 72,000 and next we have last investment 12,000 rupees in investment we don't have any adjustment so we'll be writing the investment as it is investment 12,000 rupees nothing will be changed here next we'll move on to the levity side we have kratos kratos have nothing to change around and we'll be writing the same thing kratos so kratos 20,000 same amount and next bills payable is also the same amount 10,000 rupees bills payable 10,000 rupees and reserve fund is already entered in partners capital account so this won't be considered here next we have a capital so this is very important many students will write the same thing 60 and 40 no you should write the partners capital accounts capital okay so where you can find that you'll be finding in the partners capital account so we have this balancing figure right so this is the capital of the partners so to balance carry down so this should be written in the balance sheet so write capital a is capital is 82000 because that's what we wrote here the capital actual capital of a b c 82 51 25 so write a is, is 82 and b is, is 51 c is, is 25 so this is all about the capitals so by now you almost reached end and we need to enter the last one 
entry that is outstanding salary you may ask how can we get to know that we have to pass an entry called outstanding salary for that you need to move on to the question in the question if you look at the last year balance sheet we don't we cleared all the items except you didn't go through adjustment while preparing the balance sheet at least once you have to go through the adjustment because whatever the missed amount that will be here and you have to enter that so the outstanding salary will be not paid so that will be written in the balance sheet if you give a quick attention all the entries in the adjustment have gone twice this appreciation of building is first came in the revaluation account and the second time they came in the balance sheet and the stock is also came in the revaluation account again in the balance sheet and provision for doubtful debts is also came in the revaluation account as well as the balance sheet but this outstanding salary is just entered in revaluation account we didn't entered in the balance sheet so that's what we need to enter to clear the problem or to finish the problem so write outstanding salary 2000 rupees now if you calculate you will get 190000 rupees as a balancing figure so this is how you have to solve the problem that's it i hope you understand uh, this problem and if you like this video hit like and share with your friends like always see you in the next series bye